Welcome to Grey Overload, I'm Anthony, and let's go through the MSI X399 Gaming Pro Carbon AC BIOS. So I just went through the MSI B450 BIOS a little bit while ago that they've stripped down to get enough space on there to support more processors. But this is the uh, MSI Click BIOS 5 from that X399 series of boards, which is the Gaming Pro Carbon AC. This was one of the first boards that they came out with, MSI did, and I really like this board overall. It's been a great board. I've uh, bought one of these for work also, and it's been great overall at taking even the newer uh, Threadripper processors, the uh, 2000 series. But... This is basically what you boot into. You get everything from, you know, a game boost here. And then you get your AXMP, so basically your AMD XMP, which I have, I do have set here, as you can see. I basically haven't done too much with this, but the DDR speed is 3200 megahertz, which does make a huge difference. Here, I bought some better RAM a little while ago, and it was a huge uh, help overall. But then you got your information here. Uh, of the board of the CPU, memory size, V-core, DDR voltages, your BIOS version, and the build date of that BIOS. And this is the latest BIOS, I believe. They didn't, there hasn't been too much upgrading on this board as of late. I don't know if other X399s have had upgrades, but as there's been rumors that there may not be any more X399s, I figured, hey, let's get this out there, and then if I do decide to upgrade or something like that, we can maybe see some of the differences uh, with this if I stick with MSI but then you have advanced versions up here you can press F7 too F12 I think it's to take a screenshot you can I don't even know what this is oh you can search okay and then you got English there select your language you can also exit out on the bottom here you have you know there's nothing on the sides here that pops out but on the bottom you do have your Windows uh, WHQL support your uh, raid which is on which I don't uh, use so but then you do have your LAN ROM options your HD audio your CPU fan warning and most of this stuff is default except for the AXMP then you also have your hardware monitor so if we were to go into that you can kind of see what it's all set up to be you have your CPU you have your pump you have quite a bit on this where the smart fan mode can then be set up to respond correctly and I don't know how many fans are actually hooked up to headers in here I don't remember off the top of my head but you can also set this all up for for that as well you got about you got help and you can close it out as well you have your favorites which I don't have set up your M flash, this will go in and flash your BIOS. This is where I flash all of BIOS. I usually download it on a USB key, and then I boot up into BIOS and I flash. This is the way I do it on all my boards. Yeah, ASUS, I've done it on ASUS, I've done it on Gigabyte, and I've done it on MSI. Uh, those are the three boards I've had recently here, and it works great. Then you also have your help, your fan info, uh, which help gets you a little bit about this, about what's all set up. Actually, it looks pretty cool. So, your game boost stages. Then you have your fan info of what it's all set up with, it's kind of from the hardware monitor stage. You have your storage. So, you can see here I have a Samsung 970 Evo Plus as well as a uh, Western Digital and my M.2 slots. Nothing else there. Then, your memory here. You can kind of see I got Corsair 8 gig DIMMs, uh, 8x4. And this is in. Uh, these are your profiles, and you see I've selected the two with those timings. I haven't adjusted anything else. I basically set it up. I said it works, and I said I need to get work done, and so I'm getting work done. So if I had a little bit more time, I would take a deeper look at this stuff and kind of tune it even more. But then here's the CPU stuff. The information on the CPU, your hyper-threading, your uh, secure virtual machine you know, stuff, it's all there. As well as, I forgot one other thing up here, you have your boot order if you uh, want. So right now it's booting up on the Samsung Evo because that's where Windows is installed. And then you also have your temperature up here as well. 
But what I go into a lot more is advanced. So if you hit F7, you go into the advanced mode. And even though it doesn't look like it, you are in more of an advanced setting here. So you do have, you have your six basic things here, six um, pages, which is your setting, your overclocking, your M flash, which is the same where you go flash in your BIOS, your overclocking profile, your hardware monitor, and your board explorer. So if we start in settings here, you um, can go into your, your system status. And then you kind of just get, you know, the default stuff of kind of a lot of what else was out there, as well as more system information like your BIOS version, your microcode ID, etc. Then you also have your display DMI information, which is, you know, a little bit more about the board, its chassis, etc. If you press escape, you can always go back. And then you can go into advanced. And then you get, wait. That was all for system status. Then we go in advance, and then you get your PCI subsystem settings. So this is allows more memory address configuration. They get they actually do. Whoops, here as you if you go over to the side, you notice you can switch pages, and they do pop over. I didn't even know that until now. But uh, if you hover over something, they do give a nice help here. They do also have info of what the system currently is at. But the help is for each one of these. You can kind of see what the lane configurations are. If you click on this, you can switch what generation it is. And so, and in here, and I see it's hard to see it with the camera. It's not picking it up well. But you have, after you get your gen switch, which says auto gen 1, gen 2, and gen 3, then you can switch over to uh, each slot. And you can say, is it auto or is it 16 or 4x4x4x4? Four by four by four by four? Uh, you can also do so slot 2 is auto or 8 by 4 or 4 by 4 then the third one is 16 or 4 by 4 by 4 by 4 and auto these all have auto I should say so and then I actually clicked on something else too fast and then also PCI lane 6 is by 8 or by 4 by 4 and of course it also has auto so you have 1 3 4 and 6 here in your settings for that advanced setting you have your ACPI which is you know just a little bit about your power LED and what it does CPU temperature you know over alert so there's some settings there as, as I said these are all basically yeah these are all defaulted so I didn't have any issues after I set the a AMXP so I was just like okay it works I need to get some work done as I mentioned there but now we're on to LAN onboard LAN configuration and you do have, you know, different options. You can enable, disable it. Also, your SATA. This has, you know, this board has a pretty good SATA hookup as well. If you want to do like a nice little server for storage, this would be a good board for that. You could put a Threadripper in it, especially just second gen, and you'd have some great throughput. Uh, you have, after your SATA, you have your audio, and then you have your HPET, um, high precision event timer support as well. So then we go into integrated, oh, I just clicked on that, Whoops. USB configuration, and you can see you got two little devices here. I got a keyboard and two mice connected. Interesting things, I have two mice connected, but okay. I don't know how it gets that, but that's what it's thinking. But then you also there, you got the legacy support, and you have a XHCI hands-off as well. So... Power management, ERP ready, and right now it's disabled. Restore after power loss, which is off. I kind of wish that this was an all BIOS just set to last state, but uh, I'm sure they have the reasons for that. And then system power fault protection. You got Windows OS configuration, and you have Windows 10 WHQL support, and that's disabled. So never set it up and that's the way it comes so you also have the wake up events and everything here is disabled um, I could enable especially if your keyboard and mouse to wake it up but I don't mind actually hitting the power button to wake up the computer so my computer actually usually goes to sleep uh, automatically if not I put it to sleep when I leave it and then I just wake it up and I usually just do that by hitting the power button but I could set these if I really wanted to 
erase the key here. Here's what it comes up. And it's just telling us that, you know, you can see it there as well. And it's saying, click yes to unlock your SSD from a frozen state and proceed with secure erase. No, I don't want to do it. And then you also have your uh, Intel Gigabit Network Connection. The one thing I wish I, this did have was like a 2.5 gig NIC or a, you know, something higher than just a 1 gig. But you have your NIC configuration, auto negotiate, wake on land, blinking LEDs, and a little bit more about it. So that's basically it for the advanced side in settings. But when we go to boot, you'll get also a little bit more on the boot configuration. You have full screen logo. You have basically, you know, numlock, all that stuff. I usually always have numlock set to on. And luckily on this board, it was defaulted that way. And then boot mode is legacy plus UEFI. Here's the boot options as you kind of saw before in the easy mode. Then you also have the hard drive boot option number one and hard drive um, same thing there with the two drives so kind of a little bit more on that you have security of your administrative trusted computing if you have that on there I believe this board actually allows a TPM chip if you want to go that route and they also have tra chassis intrusion then there's also save and exit but we'll go over to the overclocking profile and overclock explorer mode you have normal or you have expert so then you can see the cpu frequency is 3400 there's nothing really set here but then you'll see i'm selected profile 2 for the uh, uh, dram settings and you got pretty much a lot of your normal uh, overclocking specifications here where they're all set to auto of course because i haven't touched them up uh, at all then you got cpu specifications so if you click on that that actually gets to all your information about your processor and then you click on technology you can see kind of what all it all has in there as well and then if you go to memory uh, Z you can see a little bit about the speed and then and all your you know information about your memory then you can also do your XMP settings here of what it, what it all is so a little bit about those timings and stuff and then you got CPU features and this is where, where you actually go to set some of those CPU features like virtualization uh, if you want to enable or disable that you know precision boost overdrive the scaler you can set all those things um, you got your performance regulator your, your BIOS PSP support cool and quiet you know relaxed EDC throttling your spread spectrum all this stuff smt support so all this stuff is there so you have to look at that in overclocking a little bit and then if we get out of that there's m flash save and load so the, the oc profile is to save and load i don't have any save because like i said i didn't get to it and then if you go to hardware monitor that's where we were before in the easy mode when you click on that it takes you to the same screen you get cpu system etc and then board explorer and so this right here actually brings up a little bit about your board and as you hover over things it kind of shows you what is on the board so you got it even shows you kind of what is filled so you can see like the cpu's filled the ram slots so not or only certain things you hover over it will show you but i'm just going through here and this is actually the first time I've actually done that. So that goes to you, shows you USB 3, your SATA ports. So if it's something that they don't necessarily show you, they will then show you the other side of it. So kind of what's populated here. Uh, yes, there is something in there. I don't remember what it is. Oh, it's a Wi-Fi card. So it's actually pretty cool to see everything they have there. And as you hover over stuff, you see at the bottom, you can see, see a little bit about all of these devices so or what they are down in the lower corner so that's a little bit uh, that's basically this board here of what it is and everything that they have set up if you go to M flash it says your system will auto reboot and enter flash mode so you can do that and I'll enter flash more just make sure you have it uh, plugged in and you'll go so this is MSI it's a little bit more click bios and it works great I mean for what it does I do wish that uh, I like BIOS, especially if in a supported flat platform that seem a little bit more supported. 
but you know from tw this is from 2018 now it's about a year old bios and if there's been no problems then it's perfectly fine as long as it's stable hopefully there's no security flaws that need to be fixed in it but uh, from my knowledge there isn't at this point but we'll see we'll see what MSI does differently if I buy another MSI board or if I continue with this uh, if, if I upgrade so this is a little bit about that uh, x39 gaming pro carbon AC board as well so let me know if you have any questions about this board or you're looking at a thread ripper system on these first or second generation thread ripper platform as well and I do want to thank you for watching thank you for taking the time to help support gray overlord and helping this channel grow I really do appreciate it I, it's it's great that you guys are going through and really helping this channel out. I, I really appreciate it, especially right now. I'm still going to the hospital every single day, so I'll be doing that for at least another month. So we'll see how that goes. It's, it's not for me. It's for um, our new baby daughter. So hopefully she recovers here and grows so that she can come home. So I do appreciate that as well and you guys i want to do want to say god bless and thank you for watching and don't forget to like share and subscribe